YouTube, team keep it clean, what's going on, it's Ain't Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, don't go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons uh, in the list that you see. Uh, I love y'all. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for everybody for supporting the channel. Uh, I'm recording this on September 16th. So this is after we get the news about the Ronnie Stanley injury, after we get the news about the Chris Westry injury. So hopefully, by the time you see this video, we do not have any more news on any other injuries because this has just been wild. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. We got some great questions, as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from Bird Squad. He said, what's up, Engraven? Got a semi-quick question. Not with all the letters that I see in this email. He said, I'm trying to figure out what the Ravens' biggest need is. So if you could select any player in the NFL and bring him to the Ravens, who would it be? Basically, which player around the league do you th wish would be a free agent? Think as if it were Madden and you could have any player on the squad without losing anyone. I know we can't just get whoever we want to, but this would definitely help us figure out what to look for. And you never know. GMs may watch team keep it clean. So which player in the NFL uh, would be a given for us to win a Super Bowl if there is one? I have my guy, but I just wait till the video drops. Uh, anyway, man, can't wait uh, till. Oh, this was before the uh, yikes, the uh, the stream for the Raiders game. But now I appreciate it. Um, now, given the Ravens situation, before it would be wide receiver, before all the injuries and stuff would be wide receiver, but right now it'd be just a really good offensive lineman and a really good uh, left or right tackle. Um, so I, whether it be Trent Williams, um, I think that would be uh, uh, just a really, really good one. Um, man, and even on, on offense, I would say like a Trent Williams I can't really think of the – I cannot think of all the top offensive linemen off the top of my head right now. I guess because I'm, I'm just – I'm a little distraught right now with all the injuries that the Ravens just – because it's, it's, it's been a week. It's been a week. Like, the loss is one thing. The loss is like, okay, whatever. We lost. All right, we got 16 games left. All right, but the injuries is like really what's been getting to a lot of us. And it's like, man, they just keep piling up. Um, but I would say a, a premier left tackle. And then on defense, somebody like a, uh, a T.J. Watt. Um, a yeah, TJ White, like a Tredavious White, um, a very rangy, rangy safety, some something, something like that. So yeah, that's what that's the direction I would go. Next question came from my guy Jeff J. He said, "Thanks for your podcast after the game. Appreciate you listening to it. Uh, always a good listen. Ravens offense doesn't seem to have a system. It's either a twenty yard or more pass or a run play off tackle. So predictable. Uh, maybe it's just because it's the first game of the season. But why did Tyson Williams stop getting?" Aries. He was a beast the first quarter. All right, so with that, um, timing is always everything. He sent this on September 14th, but today is the 16th, and the Ravens today had a presser that featured Greg Roman, and he explained why Tyson Williams stopped getting carries. And he said that it, he just wanted to get all the other running backs involved. And that was it. That's what he said. And he said, oh, the, the, the days of that just only going and using only one running back, those days are long gone. That's in the past. That's not happening now. So that's why he stopped giving carries to Tyson Williams. Now, of course, I don't expect and we shouldn't expect the Ravens to really dive into the why he stopped getting carries. But one would have to think it was a pass protection thing. One would have to think it was a uh, just the, 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 the miscommunication with the snap. Uh, oh, with the handoff, excuse me, not the snap between him and Lamar. One would have to think it might have been the fumble that was that he fumbled out out of bounds. All those things, but still, even still, I just uh, yeah. So anyway, that was that. That's what Greg Roman said. Uh, he also said Hollywood was getting some passes as well. He sure was. Hopefully they'll learn from their mistakes made in this game. Defense, I'll give them a C plus. Some big plays for stops, but stop still giving up the big chunks of yards. They'll learn also. Must give props to the Raiders. Much improved team. I agree. Next question came from my guy Carlos. He said, Engraven, it's been a while since I sent in a question. Hope y'all doing great and your family as well. Appreciate it, man. Uh, hear me out. Let's get Ingram back for a seven, a seven round pick tops or a late six rounder. Uh, get him back. He knows how to run with Lamar and the point of exchange is way better than any of these other new guys for the time being. Should Cleveland start, uh, oh, oh, should Ben Cleveland start at right tackle? 
uh, and have Patrick McCarry move to left guard or move Villanueva Alejandro uh, to the left guard spot. What do you think? Uh, wow. So this is crazy because he sent this on September 14th. The Ryan Stanley injury news didn't come out until September 16th, which is today. So he was already on to something even before. Um, so with Mark Ingram, if they traded a six or seven round for him to come back, I wouldn't mind that. But I just don't see it happening. I, I don't. I, I really don't. Um, now, the, the second question, should Cleveland start at right tackle? That would certainly be something. Um, but I would rather him start at right tackle. Well, just based off of body size alone. Cause Patrick McCarry, he got like short arms and he just... I'm 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 a little worried for him to be all right tackle. I, I really am. Um but hey, what's the worst that could happen at this point, man? Um so with Ben Cleveland, I don't I don't even know what I want these Ravens to do. Cause this is just it's a mess right now. Alejandro's getting ready to go back to left tackle, so he can scratch that part of the question out. Um but at right tackle, I would just rather some uh but Patrick McCarty, he like low to the ground, he like a little pit bull. A little pit bull playing offensive lineman. Um so I guess when guys try to get underneath them, it'll be nice because he'll, be, he'll be low to the ground. But at the same time, it's like, man, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm very worried about this offensive line, man. I am very worried because they were already bad enough with the starters, and now they just they lost two starters in Ronnie Stanley and Tyree Phillips. Um, so now Villanueva going back to his original position that could help him. Um, but as far as everybody else, I'm just I'm very worried. And then he said third, the point of exchange is what lost. Uh, what was lost with the new guys? Do you think it will take long to get that down? Thanks for hearing me out, and hope you continue to have success. Appreciate it. And now I, I think just repetition. All, all it's going to take is repetition for them to really get that down. And then after that, it should be smooth sailing. This question came from my guy Ricky B. He said, "Ain't Graven. Love watching the vids. I watch the vids every day. Hey, appreciate it, man." Uh, every time I get a notification of a new vid, I get so hyped. Sorry to be so long-winded, but I have a couple of questions regarding the offense. Uh-oh. With the offense, do you feel like the offense evolved over the years with Lamar Jackson as quarterback? Uh, yeah, of course. For sure. Because Ravens were never, ever a consistent offensive team. And it's like, uh, just, y'all, imagine when we complain about the offense nowadays, they like even the other day against the Raiders, we complained about the oh they scored twenty seven points. If we could get a Ravens offense of the past to score twenty seven points, we'd be jumping and screaming and celebrating. That's how spoiled we become with offense. But it's because we know their potential. We know that it can be so much better. But this as of with with the when the Ravens offense does bad, that look at that they scored twenty seven points. <laughs> they scored twenty seven points. So, yeah, they certainly evolve for sure, 1,000%. He said, every year we get preseason hype about the offense evolving, but I don't see it. Uh, my next question, does and can Lamar call audibles at the line of scrimmage when reading the defense? He said, yeah. He, 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 they asked him in the press the other day. He said, yeah. He could check out the plays and stuff, call different plays, switch stuff around and whatnot. So, yeah. And, and he's done that before over the years, too. He said, I feel as though once the play is called by Giro, that's it. Like, before the snap, I don't see any pointing or talking to the offense to change something because of something he reads in the defense. The Bradys, Rodgers, and Mahomes are always pointing and pre-snap calling audibles because of reading the defense. I'm not saying Lamar doesn't know how to read defenses, but maybe he just needs more command of the offense and freedom to audible plays. I thank you for all you do for the Ravens Nation fan base. Sincerely, Ricky B. Appreciate that, Ricky. Um, so, yeah, he, 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 has, he said that he does it. He said that he does it. We see it sometimes. We don't see it, like, all the time. So, yeah, that would be a good idea if Lamar just took more control of that offense and was like, look, Giro, I got this. Let, let, let's do it my way. I would love to see that. I am. Maybe we have already. I don't know. But I would love to see what Lamar just, where well, he like really, really run the show. Next question came from my boy Lance C. He said, hope everything is good with the family. Sorry I wasn't able to attend the live stream. Don't ever apologize for that. That's all good, man. Uh, but I was able to watch the Ravens game, and I think we have to really think that Justice Hill is in danger. Uh, Tyson Williams' burst of speed and ability to maneuver is amazing with Gus and J.K. Dobbins as our power backs. I think he's a solid second or third option. Yeah, he certainly is. He said, what are your thoughts on Alejandro Villanueva? I'm in high school and played a tackle position on offense, and when I look at him move, he does everything right, but he doesn't play aggressive enough. He doesn't get his hands on the ends. Crosby played amazingly and really stood him up. And my final thing, oh, well, okay. So before you get into the final thing with, with Villanueva, uh, when, whenever you've been doing something for so long 
and then you're asked to do the same thing but in a completely different way um it's not doing the same thing it's completely different uh, so it can be a big challenge so with Villanueva he had a very frustrating Monday night football game uh, so you imagine how much fans have were frustrated with his performance imagine how he himself is frustrated with his own performance uh, so we just got to give it time give it time and just hope that it gets better all right he said my final thing is what kind of threat do you think the Raiders and the Chargers put on Kansas City as far as winning a division because we know Patrick Mahomes is great but the Raiders and Chargers are looking nice and we can't forget the Raiders were having back and forth games last year with the Raiders they certainly were um well, oh, I think you meant the Raiders were having back and forth games last year with the Chiefs, but I understood what you meant. But it's all good. Um, they're definitely a threat because of the how familiar they are with the Chiefs they're in the same division. So anybody that's in the same division with you that goes against you two times a year, they're always going to be a threat because they play you at least twice. Sometimes in the case of the playoffs, they'll play you three times, but they play you at least twice. So. They start to really know your tendencies. Next question came from my guy, Seth T. He said, what's up, Engraving? What's up, Seth? I've been listening to your videos on my 45-minute drive to and from work. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you got plenty to listen to then. But I appreciate that, man, uh, which helps a lot. I appreciate your hard work and dedication to the Ravens uh, and making sure everyone is in a positive state of mind. Hope all is well with you and yours. Appreciate that, Seth, because that's important, man, because, again, we all know that people are going through stuff. Everybody got something that they going through, man. So, yeah, man, I appreciate that. I'll be straight to the point because I know others have questions as well. Speaking from an overall standpoint, do you believe our offensive line is holding us back and could be improved with the cutting of Villanueva and replacing him with Mitchell Schwartz? Or is this too far-fetched due to paying the man the line lacked to protect? Boom, there you go. You already answered your own question. Alejandro ain't going nowhere this year. Nowhere. His contract was always set up to where he'll be here this year and then next year they probably end up cutting him. Uh, but for this year, he's here. Ravens are paying him. He got, I think, like six point something guaranteed, something like that. But he's staying. Now, um, for him to be benched, it would take a lot, a whole lot. And now, with Ronnie Stanley being hurt, yeah, he is probably not going to happen, like at all. Um, so I, I definitely wouldn't even count on that. Now, Mitchell Schwartz, that could be something. It just depends on if he still want to play football or not. I don't know what his status is. Um, I don't know what his situation is right now, so I, I can't say, but it would just all depend on him. And if the Ravens even wanted him, too, because that's, I mean, they got to want him first. Uh, and he said, you, you can't let little brother take hits, especially in the pocket, uh, or since his bread and butter is using his legs to create opportunities with passing or breaking some ankles himself. Now, with you saying that, um, you said his bread and butter is using his legs to create opportunities. Uh, that is obviously a big part of his game, but... Yeah, if, if you had the offensive line to protect him, he wouldn't have to use his legs as much. Now, he's still going to make his plays with his legs now. But if you had the offensive line to protect him, that would just make everything that much easier. I appreciate your time, and you have a good rest of your week. And take it easy. Appreciate you, Seth. Next question came from my guy, Jonathan D. He said, hey, Graven, hope the fam and everyone is doing good. I know more questions and concerns are going to come up from Ravens fans since we lost our week one matchup against the Raiders. So I'm going to try to keep it short. Uh, this, uh, this is not short at all. <laughs> but he said he's he said he going to try to. He ain't say he was. He said he's going to try to. But anyway. He said, uh, as fans uh, like me, we get concerned when we see the problems early in the season, especially in week one. Upon watching the game against the Raiders, I couldn't help but notice how our offensive line was still a problem. And yes, it is inexperienced. There is no chemistry. It's a revamp to the offensive line with new faces, fresh starts, and our best left tackle is coming back from injury. And now he is injured. Uh, but our right tackle was our biggest problem throughout the game. Example, both fumbles by Lamar happened on the right side of the field. If the tackle finished the block, they would never pursue Lamar on the back side. Oof. Or finish blocks uh, uh, and get to the second level. But hey, I'm still going to hold Lamar accountable. Majority of pressures, hurry throws happen because of the right side concerns. I think we need to find a right tackle now. He put now in all caps. Uh, here's my reason. Week one is in the books, and we dealt with Yannick and Max Crosby. We have 16 more games left on the schedule. We are facing the whole NFC North, AFC West, and, of course, our division, the AFC North twice, and Dolphins, Rams, and Colts. Let's look a little bit deeper. NFC North, Khalil Mack, Akeem Hicks, uh, Preston, and Zadarius Smith, Daniel Hunter, and Anthony Barr. Yikes. Uh, AFC West, Yannick and Max Crosby. We lost that game. Bradley Chubb, Von Miller. <laughs> Chris Jones, Frank Clark is our next matchup. Enjoy he post, so yikes. AFC North, TJ Watt twice. Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney twice. Yikes. Uh, Dolphins, Emmanuel Ogba, Jerome Baker, Rams, Aaron Donald. <laughs> Surprisingly, where do majority of these players line up? 
on the right side. Where do most of these players' pressures come from? The right side, except for Aaron Donald. He pressures on the inside, but he's commanding double teams and triple teams, which leaves one-on-one -on, -one on the right side. Out of all these matchups, I expect our right tackle to dominate in four games. The Colts, Lions, Bengals, and, and, the, and the Bengals twice. Based on this observation, do you think it's time to find a new right tackle now before later? Uh, there's some experienced guys left on the open market, and there's some trades that can be done. I'm not the type of fan to give up on a player, but if pass rushers can wreck a game as we all witnessed week one, can we trust that Greg Roman will make play calls to get the ball out quickly? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> or running backs and tight ends by committee to chip block and help out or should we just trust Alejandro Villanueva to step up like Taylor Luan from the Titans said after being dominated by Chandler Jones what do you think thank you and sorry for the long message and built up frustrations it is all good my friend because we are all going through it together um now again this this came before the injury news to Ronnie Stanley so if Villanueva moved to left uh what are going to be the options at right um I would say they see how they they, they, they try it in-house first. So they try it in-house first, see how it goes, and see how it goes for a couple of weeks. I think they do that first. Um, and hopefully no more injuries. But see how it goes for a couple of weeks. And then if, if it just really is no improvement at all, then you, you, you look to trade for somebody. Because um, you, you, you got draft picks. You got draft picks. Um... So you look to make a move for somebody, who that somebody would be. I honestly can't even think anybody right now, but just an offensive lineman, that plug-and-play guy that can come in right away, help out, uh, and just make the offensive line that much better. But hopefully, in-house, that gets it done. Next question came from Mary Kay. She said, hey, Graven, hope you and yours are well. Hey, we doing good. Uh, do you feel like with all the injuries, some of the players who were brought in have not even had a chance to work with Lamar or the Ravens offense, and they really just need a couple of weeks to get acclimated? Please tell me your thoughts on this. Okay, I feel you. So all the injuries held them back from sort of practicing together. Um, as far as offensive line, yeah, but as far as uh, the running backs, too. Like, Le'Veon Bell, he don't know Lamar's game like that. I mean, he watched it, but he hasn't played in it. Uh, Devontae Freeman, we'll see how he does. Latavius Murray, even Tyson Williams, because Tyson Williams, he was working with, like, Tyler Huntley. He wasn't working with Lamar. So it's a big adjustment because these injuries, like, popped up out of nowhere with J.K. and Gus, and then it's like, boom, he was thrown into the mix. Now, as far as the wide receivers, They've been working with him, so that's that's why that that had been straight. Like with the wide receivers, especially Sammy Watkins in Hollywood, that Florida connection, um, that was fine. And of course, you know Mark Andrews, they got their connection. You know Mark Andrews with that the little drop. But anyway, um, nah, so for for the running backs, yeah, that could be a problem there. Offensive line, yeah and no, but yeah and no. So it's, it's, it's a mix of both, but that's a real good observation. Next question came from Greg from b -more. He said, what's up? Hope your day is great. Remember last year, Raiders upset the Saints, uh, though obviously Saints were a better team last year than them overall. So I'm not overreacting to the Ravens losing, but those fumbles still hurt. While figuring out and adjusting to injuries, hopefully we don't even uh, go 0-2. I still think we'll get to January, but my question is, uh, with Alejandro at right tackle, if that continue, if he continues to struggle, remember this is new for him being at right tackle, and it's just been one game. Could you see Macari replacing him later, or a possible trade for a tackle? Or a crazy thought I don't see happening, but if it improves the line, move Stanley to right tackle and Villanueva to left just for this year. He said he said, and again he sent this on September fourteenth. He said I know it's not happening, don't want it to happen, and Stanley should stay at left no matter what. It was just a thought, is all. Anyway, keep doing what you're doing. And boom, it's happening now. Everything that he said in this email, minus, I mean, Stanley obviously got hurt. But he said, again, could you see Makari replacing Alejandro at right tackle? Boom, it's happening. Could you see uh, Villanueva going to left tackle? Boom, it's happening. And now, again, the Stanley thing, it couldn't happen because he got hurt. But, hey. He ended up calling it. Next question came from my guy Dylan J. He said, Hey, Graven, hope you and yours are doing well. We're doing really good, Dylan. Appreciate it. We all saw the game on Monday, and it's quite obvious the offensive line was incredibly underwhelming in protection. There are a few free agents available that I'd be happy to see us at least bring in and see if it's better than what we got. What do you think about the likes of Rick Wagner or Russell Okung at tackle and Forrest Lamp at guard? Oh, you're trying to upgrade everything I see. I'm thinking a trade for any sort of upgrade would be expensive, if not impossible. Not impossible. 
But depending on who you get, if you're getting a starter, yeah, you're gonna have to pay pay some uh some capital, some draft capital. But not impossible. But as far as Rick Wagner, um, Rick Wagner would be an interesting one because he was con- contemplating retirement, so you don't know where his head is. Uh, with Russell Okung, wasn't he like a wasn't he really like a really high pick? I think he was. I forget though. But anyway, um, so that's a possibility. Uh, and, and again, you never want to count anybody out. You never want to be like, oh, there's a reason why they're free agents. Um, cause I mean, it could be, but at the same time, these guys could come in and ball out just like LJ Ford and Josh Bynes did when the Ravens picked them up out of nowhere. And people were like, what? Just like with, uh, Don Pico and Justin Ellis did when Ravens picked them up and a lot of people were like, what? Um, so yeah, it's, it's possible. And I think, um, I, I just think it would take the Ravens exhausting all their in-house options first before they made a move. Next question came from EJD. He said, Hey, Engraven, what's going on? Tough loss last night. Hope all is well. Uh, why do the Ravens blitz and play man so much? It's like they don't know how to play zone or zone blitz. Cover zero or one on the other team's side of the field is not good play calling. Do you see Wink going a little more conservative because we will get smoked playing this way against the Chiefs? No. I don't. I, I don't see Wink going more conservative. I don't see Wink holding back the blitz. I don't see Wink um, not rushing, not rushing seven, not rushing less than seven, or sometimes eight or nine or ten. Or eight. No, um, I, I just I don't. Wink, Wink. I don't think he is going to change his philosophy as a defensive coordinator um, just because it's not working. Now, um, one thing, my, my biggest concern with Wink is not even, oh, stop blitzing so much. Da, 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 da. Well, it can be, but in game adjustments, man, in game adjustments, you, you, you can have, you can, it's, a, it's okay to have a strategy for an opponent, to, to come up with a game plan for an opponent, and you're going through the game and whatnot, and, and you see, okay, that's, this strategy isn't working. It's okay to change it up. It's okay to be like, you know what? No, this. This ain't working. We 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 gotta switch stuff around. We we gotta we gotta change this up. And sometimes I don't know for sure. I can't say for sure. But sometimes it seems as if there may be a, a, a strategy that he has for, for opponents and he just he sticks with it no matter what, even if it isn't working. Like my thing would be okay, if in the first quarter it's not working, all right, cool. And you're still trying throughout the first quarter. Okay, you're trying, but it's not working, all right, cool. Second quarter, if you're still trying it, ah, okay, cool. You don't want to give up on it, whatnot. But all right, second half, if it if it just wasn't still wasn't working, change it up, switch it up, adjust, adjust to what they're doing. So, cause cause you just cause players know too, they can see that stuff. I'm sure they have plenty of conversation with Wink and stuff too, cause they they say, always say he's a player's coach, man. People love Wink, they love him. Um, so. I would just say that the adjustments just they they, they got to get better. This question came from Crystal S. She said, "Good morning. Hope you and the family are doing fine. Oh, we're good. I appreciate it." She said, "I stayed up watching the game and just kept saying to my husband, they are letting Derek Carr throw everywhere. Ravens only got to him a couple of times, whereas Lamar was sacked more than uh, Derek Carr." Uh, I am not too good with the names of everyone on the team, but I think that Queen and whoever else that was supposed to get to the quarterback just did not do their job. The corners, the rookies, just let the Raiders catch the ball. Uh, we had the lead, but we could not keep it. Lamar did good, but he should have run more to put them away when we had the opportunity to do so. They will struggle with the Chiefs, I'm sad to say. Have a good day and blessings to you and the family. Appreciate it, Crystal. Um, and yeah, the, the game was certainly a struggle. Uh, against the Raiders, there was a lot of frustration, a lot of things they could have done better. Um, we just wish they would have finished drives more, uh, just converted some third downs more, um, made some 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 passes were caught um, instead of dropped. Uh, the running game was better. The offensive line was better. The defense was better. Uh, to me, I feel like the biggest letdown in the Raiders game was actually the defense, in my opinion. I really do. Um, from the... Uh, just to, to still the lack of a pass rush, um, the lack of a consistent pass rush, and, and especially when our offensive line is supposed to be way better than this, and our offensive line got dogged. Theirs was it, it was up and down early on, but they started they started holding it down for Derek Carr because he yeah like you say he was throwing all over the field. Um, but it's just I, I just my biggest thing was uh, at the end of regulation. They got 37 seconds. It's like, all right, Ravens defense, 37 seconds to a team, and they ain't got no timeouts either? Oh, please. Just tackle them in bounds. Just don't give up nothing crazy. We'll be straight. No. Nope. Didn't hold it down. 
So, uh, and now you facing the Chiefs this week?